Hey everyone, today's video is on the surgical anatomy of the axilla, uh, specifically as it relates to axillary dissection. Now this was one of those anatomic spaces along with the inguinal canal that I had a really hard time getting a grasp of, uh, especially early in my training. It seemed like these were somewhat arbitrarily defined spaces with odd shapes and the focus was all about delineating these very specific boundaries. And it was just a lot to take in and was more confusing than helpful. And once I actually did a few of these cases, I realized that there's only a few of a small subset of those structures that actually matter. Uh, and I feel like a video that details just those kind of stays bare bones will be much more helpful than a lot of the resources out there right now, at least as it pertains to surgically relevant anatomy. So to get into the boundaries of the axilla, um, a lot of places will define this as a somewhat pyramid shaped structure where the base of the pyramid is the skin of your armpit, more or less. And then the point of the axilla is roughly where your upper arm meets the chest wall. Uh, and then, like I said, sometimes you define like all six of these sides and it just gets really confusing. Um, but the key boundaries in my experience, so let's say we're looking at the right side of the body. So this is the right arm. Then we got the right chest over here. The key boundaries that I've found have been the axillary vein, the latissimus dorsi posteriorly, this muscle, uh, the pec major and minor, kind of superior anteriorly, and then kind of deep to all that back here, there's the chest wall, which is made up of, of course, the ribs and the serratus anterior, etc. And we're going to get into all these structures with a little bit more detail and some, some better images than my drawings here. But before we focus on that, let's remember what are the contents of the axilla or why are we actually operating on this area in the first place? And it's typically for cancer operations where we're looking to either uh, take out nodes with cancer in them or at least sample the lymph nodes to see uh, if cancer has spread in this area. And so remember these lymph nodes are defined in different levels and those are based on the pectoralis minor right there in the center. So level one lymph nodes are lateral to the pec minor Level two lymph nodes are posterior to the pec minor, and then level three are medial to the pec minor. You can imagine as you get deeper, these get harder to dissect. They're by some critical structures like this vein up here. So there's more morbidity the deeper you go. So remember, for something like breast cancer, we're typically only taking these level one and two lymph nodes because it's just not worth it to go deeper. In some other disease processes, such as melanoma, you will take level one through three lymph nodes. The final point is uh, if you hear the term Rotter's nodes, those are nodes that are on top of pec minor here, uh, but below pec major. So those are kind of sandwiched in there. Technically, they're a level two node, but they're in the other side than you would expect. So if we're trying to get out the lymph nodes, um, we're trying to preserve everything else. And what we really want to focus on when we're talking about anatomy within the axilla is the nerves. Because if you get into blood vessels or vascular bundles, you can always stop bleeding. But if you divide a nerve, you cannot regain function of that nerve. So the nerves are really the key structures I want you to think about. And so we actually have a pretty good uh, depiction of them here. So first, just to review what we talked about before, what are the key landmarks of the axilla that we think about? Well, back here, we have the latissimus dorsi. Uh, this, the chest wall is essentially back in here with the serratus and the ribs. Here, more anteromedial, we have the pectoralis muscles, pec major out here, pec minor in here. Superiorly, we have our axillary vein. Note that behind it, there's the axillary artery and the brachial plexus. I don't really focus on that anatomy much because you want to stay below even the axillary vein. So you should be nowhere close to any of those structures if you're doing an axillary dissection. And then um, let's look at some of these nerves. So first and least uh, is the intercostal brachial nerves. They're the only nerves that really run medial to lateral. And they're also the nerves that often do get taken in this dissection. We just talked about how we really don't want to take nerves, but intercostal brachial nerves are often taken. It's really not a big deal. They just cause a little bit of numbness uh, to a small part of the skin on the arm. Now, getting into the more important nerves that we really try to preserve. First, we have the long thoracic. That's going to start here and then join the uh, lateral thoracic vascular bundle and run along the rib cage, along the chest wall, uh, approximately here. 
And then the other, and that innervates the serratus anterior, of course. The other big one um, is the thoracodorsal nerve, which runs along with the thoracodorsal bundle. And to think about that one, unlike the long thoracic nerve that kind of starts at a diagonal, this one jumps off pretty abruptly where the axillary veins running lateral and then kind of popping off straight down roughly in the middle of the posterior section of the axilla. Or if you want to think about there being a scapula behind here around in the middle of the scapula, uh, you have the thoracodorsal nerve coursing inferiorly or towards the feet. And that, of course, supplies your latissimus dorsi. And again, I want you to note how those both of these structures are kind of posterior. If you think about the fatty tissue and lymph nodes, those are kind of here anterior to all that stuff. And so a lot of these key structures are more along that posterior, and in the case of the long thoracic nerve, posterior medial section of the chest wall. One thing I also wanted to focus on is um, the deficits if you would injure one, some of these nerves. They're important to know and uh, commonly come up, come up on tests. So probably the classic test question is injury to the long thoracic nerve. That, of course, causes weakness of the serratus anterior, which, lead, which leads to the winged scapula deformity, winged scapula. The thoracodorsal, if you lose that, you lose a lot of function of your latissimus dorsi, which limits your shoulder adduction. Remember, that's bringing the shoulder in towards your side. Uh, we talked about the intercostal brachial, just causing a little bit of arm numbness. Again, that's often taken and not usually too big of a deal. And of course, up here in this um, kind of superior medial section, we have the medial pectoral nerve, and that innervates the pectoral muscles. All right, and so how do we take this anatomic knowledge we've built up and use that to perform a safe uh, axillary dissection? And first, just like any case, it's all about setup and positioning that leads to success. So typically the patient's positioned supine on the operating room table with the arm out on the side that you're doing a dissection on. And a big point here is what do you do with anesthesia? And the critical point is that you do not want your anesthesiologist to give any paralytics. So no paralytics. And remember, the key structures in this dissection is you do not want to damage the nerves. And if you give paralytics, the nerves, you're not able to test them during the case. So nerves have this nice property where if you just squeeze them with the forceps, they actually fire. And if you squeeze a, a piece of tissue, you're not sure if there's a nerve in there or not. When you squeeze it, um, if there's a nerve in there, that will cause the muscle to twitch. And so that really makes it is extremely helpful as you're slowly and safely dissecting out this area. Um, it will help you identify those long thoracic and thoracodorsal nerves, which are so critical uh, to avoid in our dissection. So remember, position the patient well and then no paralytics. Now, as far as the technique itself, again, we'll kind of draw the right side here. So there's an arm. Here's the chest wall kind of working in the axilla here. First, when you're looking at your skin, you want to identify your muscular landmarks. You can palpate the pectoralis muscles kind of running anteriorly here. You've, of course, got your latissimus muscles running posteriorly here. Then there's the hairline of the armpit. And usually you're making a curvilinear incision between the lat and the pectoralis, uh, roughly at about the bottom of the hairline. And remember, it doesn't give you much benefit to extend it beyond those muscles because the axilla is completely contained within those two structures. So extending your incision up here is just going to give you a bigger skin incision, but not really facilitate your dissection at all. So you generally want to limit it to being between those two muscle bellies. Now, recall from a couple images ago how we noted that our really key structures, especially that thoracodorsal and long thoracic nerve, are kind of posterior and medial. And so if you start your dissection and you work anterior uh, to dissect that through the fat and to roughly the border of the pectoral muscles, that's usually a safe dissection plane. And of course, you know, things get weird. You're, you're never going to just indiscriminately take tissue in the axilla, but you're, as long as you're able to see through the tissue, you can work your way medial pretty consistently to the uh, pectoralis border. Uh, then once you've done that, oftentimes you'll work down and hit the border of the latissimus. Again, there shouldn't be anything lateral out where you're working kind of from the skin edge down to the latissimus. 
And then I've seen people often kind of take those knowns structures, those, that known position where you're on the lat or the pec and kind of work your way superior towards that very important axillary vein. And then once you've dissected out the axillary vein, you can start guessing, okay, my long thoracic nerve is going to kind of come from medial superior, angle in and run down this way, uh, roughly halfway down. I'm expecting to find the thoracodorsal bundle. Of course, there's some more specific techniques that are a bit beyond the scope of this uh, talk that you use to find those nerves. But generally, it's safe to, from the beginning, dissect to the pec, dissect down to the lat, go up towards the axillary vein, and then work your way down very carefully going through tissue, testing it with your pickups, looking for nerves. And once you've found the long th or good candidates for the long thoracic and the thoracodorsal nerve, then you dissect inferiorly towards the feet and get those completely away from the rest of the fatty tissue of the axilla. And once you've identified the structures you need to identify, you're kind of home free to just take out all the rest of the fatty tissue and the lymph nodes within it. Once you're done, and again, remember that for most of these cases, you're just getting the level one and two lymph nodes. You're not going super deep past pec minor to get the level three lymph nodes. Then once you're done, you almost always leave a drain in these cases. Uh, there's a lot of things that can leak, lymph, blood, etc. Uh, so you usually leave a drain, and then, um, depending on the surgeon, you'll close the clavicle fascia on the way out, and then close your skin. And that's about it for the case. But again, if I was focusing on the anatomy that I need for a safe surgical axilla axillary dissection, as opposed to memorizing anatomy for a test or a textbook, I'd focus on the axillary vein, the pecs, the lats, and then the uh, long thoracic nerve and vascular bundle and the thoracodorsal neurovascular bundle. All right, that's it. These videos are for educational purposes only. Do not use them to diagnose or treat any disease. This is not clinical advice, and we will see you next time.